Welcome to the wine barn of Winter Park. My name is Andres Montoya. Uh, we're here in central uh, Winter Park, Florida, just outside of Fairbanks Avenue. And wanted to tell you a little bit about what we do here at the shop. One of the things we really focus on are small production artisan wines. Uh, we take great lengths in tasting every single wine before we offer it to our customers. And that's our pride. Everybody that works in the shop, we really are focused on wine. We know our wines. I really wanted to offer something a little more than just wine on the shelves. And in the last six months, we decided to embark on our next venture, which was bringing a wood-burning oven all the way from Italy uh, to the wine barn. So in a few moments, you're gonna be seeing Chef Ian Russell doing some awesome pies, some pizzas, some fresh ingredients, everything made from scratch right here in our Winter Park store and fired on our wood-burning oven. Thank you for watching Signature Chefs of Orlando and show you some of our really cool wine pairings and how we can make that perfect experience with great food, great wine, and great friends. Thank you. Hi, my name's Ian Russell. I'm chef at the wine barn of Winter Park. Uh, I've been a chef for about seven years, uh, classically trained at the Culinary Institute of America in Hyde Park. Uh, most recently, I worked for executive chef Brian Voltaggio at Volt Restaurant in Frederick, Maryland. Spent the majority of my career in New York City and Washington, D.C. Uh, we're going to make a pizza here today, something we call the Summer in Provence. Um, well, I'm going to start by, by working the dough out. It's, uh, it seems like a simple thing, but, but the, the dough is, is uh, it's certainly in, in, in any pizza one of the most important components. Um, we, we, we worked here to, to try and get it to be flaky, light, uh, so that it bubbles up around the edges, so that it's crispy and chewy all at the same time. Went through probably uh, 10 different incarnations of, uh, of pizza doughs, of recipes and, and ratios before, before we got to one that I was happy with. So you just press the dough out with as little flour as is, uh, as is humanly possible. Try and keep it sort of in the same status that it's in as it rose. And this dough spends a minimum of, uh, of 24 hours in the, in the refrigerator rising after it's made. It lets the, uh, lets the fermentation take place. Gives you all those fun little air pockets and bubbles that we're looking for. It's a... Uh, Classic to sort of use the edge of your table. This, this table's got a great little round edge on it. So you can kind of work the pie down around the edge. Let gravity help you out a little bit. We're just going to kind of make it as thin as, as possible before, uh, well, before it tears. So that the pie will maintain a nice light sort of texture and not get in the way of any of the toppings, but still be a, a fun flavor component. So I'm gonna move it over to uh, what's called a peel. It's a wooden peel, which we uh, should dust with a little bit of corn flour keeps the pie from, uh, from sticking when I want to slide it off and put it into the oven. So this pie, like I said, we call uh, the Summer in Provence because it's got a, a, lot, of, uh, a lot of ingredients pro from, uh, from the region Provence in France. Um, we're going we're gonna to start with uh, a white wine. It's actually a, um, a Viognier Velouté. It's a, it's a classic French mother sauce that's typically used um, to, to make bases and foundation sauces. And, and most commonly people um, will, will utilize it um, along with a stock, a stock from a protein, a, a shrimp stock or a, a chicken stock or a beef stock, whatever you want to use. In this case, uh, I used a white wine. Um, what the white wine does to the pie is just kind of gives it a uh, an underlying flavor note that sort of gives your mouth something to come back to, it gives your palate something that it that it that it's familiar with. 
um, as all the other components kind of dance on top of it. Um, we've got a little bit of caramelized red onions, which go on top. We've got some medjool dates, which have been roasted. We have a little bit of pork belly, ever important pork belly. And then a little bit of goat cheese, chevre. Uh, a little bit of kosher salt goes on top and into the oven. So our oven, I'll, I'll preface bef before, we, uh, before we go into the actual oven, our oven is imported from Italy. It's actually a 100% wood burning pizza oven that gets up to pushing 800, 850 degrees. Uh, the base of it gets to about 650 degrees, which is how we get the, the super crispy and you know, slightly uh, uh, like blackened kind of bottom of the pizza, which uh, again is just another uh, flavor component. So we're going to go into the oven. Once it hangs out for a little bit where it is, I'll spin it. it uh, it's going to color faster on one side than on the other because uh, one side is facing the flame. So we'll just get in and spin it around once to let the other side see the flame. And it's not, uh, it's not at all like cooking, like cooking in an oven um, in your home or, or even in your average Joe restaurant. It's very fickle. Um, so it takes continual play and continual adjustment. Just kind of wait till you get some pretty color on the crust. Check the bottom, make sure that it's got a nice blackened little bottom. You can see right now the crust has great color, but the top needs a little bit more. So up in the top of the oven is the hottest part. So let's kind of cheat it up there for a second or two. Okay, so pie's out of the oven. Um, we're finishing things up now, put on a pair of gloves. Um, we're gonna finish off with a pair, uh, with, a, um, uh, with a bit of arugula, uh, a little bit of coarse sea salt. It's actually um, Himalayan sea salt, it's a, a pink sea salt. Some extra virgin olive oil and then just some uh, cracked black peppercorn. The arugula, um, you can think of it as a salad. Basically, we're, we're dressing the salad once it goes on top of the pie. Not tons, just enough to add that, that peppery, nutty sort of quality that you get from, uh, from arugula. Um, extra virgin olive oil just kind of goes out around the edges. The center's got plenty of moisture. It's got that, that white wine uh, velouté in there. It's got melted goat cheese. It's plenty moist. Himalayan pink sea salt and some fresh peppercorn. And uh, that's it. That's our uh, summer in Provence pie. So in the world of food and wine pairing, there are a couple of guidelines that you can sort of keep your eye out for or, or remember as you try and work your way through the myriad of options you have when selecting a wine to, to go with your food. Today I'm pairing this Chateau Pesquier. It's a, a rosé with our summer in Provence pizza. Uh, this is a simple one, and this is a really fun little one that you can always keep in mind. 
if you're drinking a, a wine from a certain region, um, or if you're eating a food from a certain region, just, just match them. If you're drinking a wine like this one from the Rhone Valley, which is in Provence, and you're eating food that is Provencal in style, they're most likely going to work out pretty well together. And, and that's definitely the case uh, with the Chateau Pesquier and the Summer in Provence pizza. Thanks so much. If you've enjoyed what you have seen today, please leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you wherever you're watching this video. And that's it. Thank you for watching another episode of Signature Chefs of Orlando. I'm Ian Russell at the Wine Barn of Winter Park.